guys, it's Ariana. Welcome back to my channel. So for tonight's video, we're going to be reading some more scary stories. So this is actually going to be a series that I'm going to be posting on my channel very regularly. So this is from the Reddit author Books Connor, and he has this a really crazy and really creepy and really fun story that he is going to be updating quite regularly. So I'm going to be reading the first story of all of the updates. And I read it the other day and it's really freaking creepy and I'm really excited. So I hope this room is a little bit less echoey. I have a chair in here now. I have a couple mirrors. I have all my lights. I have a rug. I have my wig wall all set up. So I'm hoping it doesn't sound as echoey as it did before, but no promises. <laughs> also, I am dog sitting a Border Collie right now and she is upstairs running amok. So if you hear any weird noises, it's her running up and down my hallway because she likes to do that. She likes to play with her Frisbee and I can't get her to be quiet. I tried putting her outside and all she did was bark. So we're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> this is from the Reddit author Books Connor and it is titled, I get paid to live in haunted houses. I found the job on Indeed, seriously. It was listed as a full-time traveling house sitter gig and said that it paid $1,500 a week. All travel expenses paid. The company was simply listed as the company and I applied instantly and they scheduled me for a Zoom interview the next day. I was met with a smiling older man wearing wide rimmed glasses and a white button down. He only asked me one question. Why do you want the job? Well, it sounds exciting, I said. I want to travel and I want to experience things that most people don't. I want to have stories to tell and I really want to get away from my parents you know, make my own life and all that. I could feel myself turning red as I trailed off. I guess that's kind of a weird way to answer. Not at all, he replied. That's exactly the kind of answer we're looking for. And I'm going to go ahead and push you forward to the next round of interviews. The next round was an in-person interview on the third floor of an office building in a nicer part of the city. This time I sat down with two men who asked me a variety of questions, starting with my mental health. Had I ever heard voices? Had I ever seen things that weren't there? Was I depressed? No, no, and no. Next, they moved on to my personal life. Did I have any obligations that might make me this work? Was I close with my family? Was I in a relationship? Triple no, again. They must have been satisfied with my answers because they pulled out a contract and hired me on the spot. They scheduled me to go in for training the next week. The location was at a house about a three hour drive away. They told me I could go ahead and pack my stuff because I'd be going directly from training to my first assignment and then the next. I told my parents peace out about an hour before I left. They were pretty pissed off, but it was whatever. I didn't plan on ever seeing them again. The house was an average looking one in a suburban neighborhood. Kids were playing in the yard across the street and they all stopped and stared as I pulled in front of the house at around 8 p.m. There was a red sedan parked in the driveway, so I settled on the street out front. Another guy is going into the Humphrey house, one of the kids screamed as I walked towards the door. The man sitting on the couch said hello, and I closed the door behind me. He was a few years older than me and was dressed in a Metallica t-shirt and sweatpants. He had a bunch of papers scattered around him, and he seemed to be watching the TV, although it was only playing static. Come have a seat, he said, gesturing to the spot on the other side of the couch. I'm Craig. How much have they told you about this job? Well, nothing. I said as I sat down, but I mean, it's just house sitting. How hard can it really be? To be honest, I'm a little bit confused why I even need training. Sometimes I forget what the hiring process is like. It's been so long since I've had to train anyone. I think the last one was three years ago. They keep a pretty small team here. People don't come in and out. Retention is high. It's house sitting, yes, but with a twist. There's a little bit more to it than just hanging out in the house, but I promise it's not that hard just some rules and some things you have to do. But listen, few things before we get started. Number one, every house you will go into will have cameras. They watch everything. So don't try and do anything stupid, follow the rules, that sort of thing. But if there's cameras, why? He talked over me before I could continue. Second rule, none of this makes any sense. The rules don't make sense. The tasks don't make sense. The cameras don't make sense and the fact that we're house sitting in houses that no one lives in doesn't make any sense. But the sheer amount of money they're putting into this doesn't make sense either. If you want the money, you'll ignore the weirdness and do what they say. I don't know any more than you do about the whole operation. I've just been doing it for a while. They must like the way that I do it because I'm in charge of training and you'll do the job just like I do. And how do I do the job? 
you follow the rules. That's right, I follow the rules. He handed me two packets of paper. One of them was the general company house sitting rules. The other was this house specific rules. Packets are emailed to you a few days before official start time. Your job today is just to learn the rules and follow my lead. I'll walk you through the first two tasks. Then you'll do the last one and spend the rest of your night here alone. As long as everything goes okay, you'll be taking care of your own house in a couple of days. He stopped talking and started scrolling on his phone. So I took that as my signal to start reading. The packet started off pretty basic, a brief welcome into the company, and then a list of normal housekeeping things, like clean up after yourself, don't bring any guests, do not consume any alcohol or drugs, lock the doors before you go to bed at night, and always adhere to the list of house-specific rules and tasks. Then it got into the more odd rules. Number one, under no circumstances should you ever leave the house before the time listed on the house-specific rules. If there is an emergency, be comforted by the fact that you are being monitored and help is on the way. Leaving the house early, even under emergency circumstances, will result in an immediate termination. Number two, if something strange happens, such as a weird sound or cold breeze, whether it be during your free time or during a house specific task, do not stop what you're doing, continue diligently. Number three, always listen to house specific tasks exactly as they are written. If you are told to do something at a specific time, it is paramount that you are on time. Likewise, if you are asked to do something while in a specific mood, it is important that you do your very best to put yourself in that emotional state. Number four, unless explicitly asked by the company, do not ever wear headphones or anything that will impair your vision or hearing. It is important that you are aware of your surroundings at all times. When I finished reading, I picked up the house specific packet. Entrance time, Friday, June 21st, before 9 p.m. Exit time, Saturday, June 22nd, before noon. Rules, number one, do not turn off the television in the living room, ever. Number two, keep all interior doors unlocked at all times. Number three, keep all lights turned off from 10 p.m. until 9 a.m. Number four, you must sleep in the upstairs bedroom that is to the right of the bathroom. It has been marked with a red sticky note. Number five, you are not permitted to sleep until after 5 a.m. Daily tasks. Number one, at exactly 10 p.m., start journaling about things that make you mad. Think of someone you hate or something that someone has done to you. Try your best to get angry. When you're as angry as possible, head to the upstairs bathroom and stare into the mirror for at least five minutes. Number two, at exactly 3.03 a.m., go to the closet and sing happy birthday until 3.15. Number three, from 4 to 4.30 a.m., walk back and forth through the upstairs hallway. When I was finished reading, Craig gave me a tour of the house. When I found everything was fully stocked, the kitchen filled with food, the bathrooms loaded with toilet paper, towels, and even toiletry items like shampoo and toothpaste. Geez, it's like a hotel. Is every house like this? Yes, we have a local team around each house that makes sure it's ready for us. They just wanna make sure that we have everything we need so we don't have to leave for whatever reason. By the time we finished the tour and sat back down on our couch, it was 9.30. Craig said it was now time to start talking about the first task. He pulled a journal out of his backpack and handed it to me. So this is a super common one. There's something like this at almost every house, and it's about as boring as you can imagine. Don't overthink it. Just write about things that make you angry until you actually feel mad, and then go stare in the mirror for five minutes. You probably start to feel like something bad is going to happen. But that's just you psyching yourself out because it's creepy to be in a new house staring at the mirror with the lights off. Most of the time, nothing happens. Most of the time? You'll see eventually, he chuckled. But I've been doing this job for six years and I haven't gotten hurt yet. Just relax and don't ask questions. Remember, they're paying you good money to do a few simple tasks a day. Don't think about it. Just keep collecting your checks. That's what I do. At 10 p.m., we began writing in our journals. I started with simple things like when customers would come to the gas station and argue with me about the gas prices. I wrote about the one time when my boss yelled at me for letting underage kids run away with alcohol, like did he expect me to tackle them? But all of that was so distant now that it wasn't working. After about 15 minutes, Craig started walking up the stairs. Shit, I wrote, what really makes me mad? I started thinking about my parents. I didn't have a very good relationship with them. The more I wrote, the harder I gripped my pencil. Eventually, my hand was shaking so hard that the words came out in a childlike cursive. I was amazed at how angry I was. More angry than I'd ever been in my life. 
There was a burning in my cheeks that seemed to be coming from an external source, like someone was holding a torch inches away from my face. I passed Craig on his way back to the bathroom as I walked up the stairs. I made sure not to look at him. If I even acknowledged his presence, I'd have ended up punching him out right there. In the bathroom, I put my hands on the counter and I stared at my reflection. In the darkness, I had to lean forward over the sink to even see a vague shadow of myself. As my eyes adjusted, I saw that my whole face was a light red, like the time I let my ex-girlfriend apply a little bit of blush to my face. As the seconds passed, the light red deepened to a hearty color of a tomato. I brought my hand to my face and I flinched as I touched my cheek. It was more tender than the worst sunburn I'd ever had. The pain continued even when I brought my hand back down and then my face was glowing a crimson red, so bright that the room was enveloped in a faint red glow. It was in the glow that I saw movement behind me, a shadow that moved the way a whisper sounded. It was in the shower, a hand poking out from behind the curtain, then an arm, and then a face and a body shrouded in darkness, darkness that was darker than the room. As she walked towards me, the light from my face grew brighter and I could finally make out a shape. It was a middle-aged woman, an already wide smile growing as she stepped one mangled foot out of the tub with a wet smacking sound, like a used mop head slapping the floor. When she was directly behind me, we locked eyes through the mirror's reflection. She paused for a second, then tilted her head to the side as if confused. The light from my face went out just then and she was screaming into the darkness. One word, over and over. Leave, leave, leave. Just then, there was a sticky wetness on the back of my calf, and then a cold hand on my neck. I screamed and I crashed to the floor. From my knees, I looked for the light switch, finding nothing but the textured paint on the wall, then a corner of something smooth. It was the wall plate. I fumbled my hand upward for the switch, but it was just out of reach. I cried out with terror as I forced myself to my feet. My hand glided across the switch just as something closed around my wrist, forcing my arm down against my side. I recoiled, stepped backwards, tripped against the toilet, and fell against the wall. I looked up at what I knew was certain death. Instead, it was just a shadow of a man wearing a black shirt and jeans. He was reaching his hand out for me to take it. Craig? Yeah, dude, get up. The lights stay off or we're both going to get fired. He switched from a normal voice to a whisper, or worse. He led me back downstairs to the couch where the TV static was slightly louder than before. What the fuck was that? What was what? He was leaning back with his hands behind his head. He didn't have a care in the world. Did nothing happen to you up there? There was a fucking ghost, man. This place is fucking haunted. You just creeped yourself out. Probably got scared in the dark. Happened to me my first time too. You'll get used to it. This is the chillest job ever if you just learn to relax. There's no way that was in my head, I said. But even as I said it, I was starting to doubt myself. Maybe the light was just my eyes adjusting to the darkness and the ghost was my imagination. Maybe I really had just creeped myself out after all. When I left the room, there wasn't a scratch on me, no blood, no wetness. So I guess he was right. Trust me, man, just go with the flow and things are gonna get so easy. I'm gonna go make a sandwich. Do you want one? We ate and then relaxed for a while. I tried to read a book, but couldn't focus. My mind kept wandering back to the figure in the bathroom. Was my imagination really that powerful or was there something actually wrong with this house? My gut told me the answer, but I didn't want to accept it. At 3 a.m., we went upstairs to the closet. Craig started his watch as we spoke. So what's the weirdest thing that's happened to you while on the job? Nothing that crazy, he replied. I mean, one time I was sleeping in the closet of an old house and I woke up to the place being raided by the company. They put a bag over my head and took me outside. I thought they were gonna kill me, but I guess there was just some stuff I wasn't supposed to see. But if anything, it should just make you feel better. Something must have happened that they came to save me. That's the only time I've ever seen the company. Like I said, I've been working here for six years and I haven't gotten hurt yet. Our closet birthday party was as eventful as it would be if it went into your own closet and started singing happy birthday at three in the morning. Though, if you try it, I'll bet you'll be pretty creeped out regardless. By 3.30 in the morning, Craig was shaking my hand and heading out the door. It was nice to meet you. You'll do great and make a lot of money. Just remember, they're paying you to do what they say, not to worry yourself by asking questions you don't want answers to. Relax, and this will be the best job you've ever had. It was hard to relax when I found myself walking back and forth through the dark hallway at 4 a.m. My mind kept wandering back to my red face, the glowing light and the shadow of a woman walking towards me. 
Alone in the house, it was hard to convince myself she wasn't real. My walk was going fine until 4.15 when I was walking past the bathroom. There was a faint glow under the door, a red light. My first instinct was to bolt downstairs and then I remembered the rules. If something strange happens, do not stop what you're doing. Maybe it was just some sort of experiment, I reasoned. Craig hasn't been hurt in six years. There's cameras everywhere, and they came in to help him when something weird happened. My job was to continue diligently, so I did. What were the odds that Craig lasted so long and something happened to me on my very first day? The next time I walked past the bathroom, I heard a low, guttural sound, like someone groaning in pain. Could be the AC, I thought, but then I put my hand against the door. Leave. The voice came from deeper in the room, but with that same low tone. And then there was that slopping sound, once again, and closer and closer to the door. I instinctively reached out towards the knob and I pulled as hard as I could just a half second before whatever was inside the bathroom tried to open it. It took all my strength to keep the door shut. A few times it opened a couple of inches wide and I saw glimpses of that woman again. Purple and black arms, tangled hair stretching down to her elbows. Each time I was able to do a mighty heave and keep the door shut. Eventually, the struggling stopped, but I held that door shut with one hand as I stared at my watch. At 4.30, I took a deep breath and I opened the bathroom door. The ground was covered in bloody footprints mixed with something green. Vomit, the same vomit that was dripping from the doorknob with a sound like a leaky faucet. At 5 a.m., I went to the bedroom, but I didn't even bother trying to sleep. I'm not a Christian, but I spent the night praying to God to keep me safe. I was convinced she was going to open the unlocked bedroom door at any moment. I wanted so badly to leave, but as scared as I was of the house, I remembered what Craig said before I almost turned the light on. We're both gonna get fired, or worse. Or worse? What was worse? What would happen if I didn't follow their rules? At 9 a.m., I got an email from the company. You did an amazing job last night. It's been a long time since we've had someone able to make so much happen on their very first day. I want you to know that you handled every situation exactly as you should have. You are already an amazing agent. I look forward to seeing what you can accomplish in the years to come. As a reflection of your excellent work, we've decided to raise your pay to $2,000 a week going forward. Thank you for your service. The work you are doing is important in ways that you'll never understand. I've attached a file with instructions for your next assignment. All the best, the company. It didn't take me long to decide that I wanted to continue working for the company. The pay was good, and apparently I had a real knack for it. That must have been my first time in my life that anyone ever told me I was good at something. Besides, I'd said from the beginning that I wanted to live an exciting life with stories to tell. Well, look at me now. This job hasn't exactly failed me, has it? I've been working with the company for two years since my first job with Craig. I've stayed in over 100 houses, all of them haunted in one way or another. Most of the time, my job is just like Craig said, pretty chill, while other times, things are absolutely batshit crazy. I won't lie and say it's always easy. I've almost died more times than I can count, and as much as the company likes to pretend that they're in control, they aren't always on top of everything. I have a lot of stories to tell, and recently things have been getting a lot more interesting. If anyone's interested, I'd love to share more. Until then, I'll be sleeping at your local haunted house. And that's the whole story. So that is the first installment of this crazy series of this guy going to haunted houses and dealing with all of these weird rules and these weird tasks and dealing with these weird entities and ghosts. So obviously this is a fictional story. This is a really, really interesting story. It's a really fun story. And although the first installment wasn't super creepy, it was creepy enough that I really wanted to read it and share it with you guys because I found it was just such an interesting story. And I do really like the stories where there's just like a weird list of rules. I read a couple of them. It was like one about a uh, working security and there was a weird set of rules. And then I've read another one about working in a diner and there's some weird set of rules. I just really like the rule stories because they're really fun and they're really odd and they're usually pretty well written. So this is where I'm going to end the video. I'm gonna to try to post about two videos a week going forward just to try to keep on a schedule because I know I've said that I would try to post as often as I could, but I have quite a busy life. I have a full-time job that I do besides YouTube and I dog sit every, 
week basically and I also dog walk in my area. If you guys do enjoy my channel, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. If you guys haven't already watched all of my other spooky videos, please go give those videos a watch because views have been down and I know YouTube is not promoting me as they used to and I know you guys have been complaining for quite a long time now that YouTube is not notifying you guys of my videos. So if you guys are already subscribed and you have notifications turned on, maybe just hit the bell and turn them off and then back on again and see if that fixes the problem because I really don't know why a lot of you guys aren't getting notified. But I have had a serious dip in views and I don't know why and I don't know if it's because of YouTube not promoting me or if YouTube is just not notifying you guys of my content or if YouTube is just trying to become TikTok and they're pushing out shorts instead because my shorts get like tens of thousands of views, but my regular form content gets like a thousand max. I don't know what's going on. But if you guys made it to the end of this video, leave me a house emoji in the comments down below to let me know you guys made it to the end. If you guys have any creepy stories that you guys wanna share with me, please feel free to reach out either over my email or over my Instagram, and I will definitely read you guys' personalized stories. I think the next video that I do will be more personalized ones and true creepy stories rather than just no sleep fictional stories, because I know not all of you guys love the fictional ones, but the fictional ones tend to be the stories that I can make longer videos with. So. There has to be some give and take here, guys. If you guys want me to do really, really long videos, like the 25 minute mark, then they have to be pretty much fictional. If you guys are okay with shorter videos, then I can do a lot of your guys' true creepy stories, but it really just depends on what I can find. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys at the next video. Bye.